You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now here's your host, every man's hero, JTE. Welcome everybody to another episode of JTE Movie Thinks. This week I'm joined by another. <laughs> member of the crew, the one, the only, Alicia Malone. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thanks for having me. I, I love your hello. It reminds me a little bit of Miss Doubtfire. And uh, yeah, a little bit Miss Doubtfire. Also a bit, you know, Seinfeld in the episode where they're oh, talking the belly yeah, button. Yeah, hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the girlfriend gives an ultimatum, like, either get rid of that noise. Yeah. And she's Do like, the voice yeah. or not. Yeah. Are you a big Seinfeld fan? A huge Seinfeld fan. Oh, really? I love it. I can't quote it like some of the other members of our yeah. team, but I just love it. I always rewatch it. You, so in Australia, they aired it a lot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it took a little while to come to us, but once it was there, I loved it. Before we get into the whole movie aspect, let me ask you about that. How is TV different in Australia than the States? We get a lot of American shows, so it's actually not that different at all. It just sometimes depends how fast they bring it to America, okay. I mean, to Australia from America. Used to be it would take a long time. So we'd really? hear about these shows in America and then finally they'd come to Australia, but now they fast track them because or else yeah. people just download them. There's a couple of Australian shows, but mainly American shows, and that's why I feel like with that and movies, that's why Australians are good in mm-hmm. general at doing the American accent and know a lot about the American culture because we grew up watching it. Is there an Australian show you, you watched growing up that you absolutely love that nobody in America knows about? Well, the, the two staples that everyone watches when they grow up are uh, Home and Away and Neighbours. They're the okay, two soaps yeah. on TV. Oh, They've both soaps. been running a long time, but okay. they're, they're a little bit cooler than the Days of Our Lives type soaps. They're, okay. they're with young people and people like Chris Hemsworth were mm-hmm. in it. Like Everyone has come through the ranks of Home and Away or Neighbours. So when you're young, you're obsessed with that. So it's a little less cheesy is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Chris Hemsworth is in there. Huh? Yeah, Chris Hemsworth, Guy wow. Pearce was there, what? Russell Crowe, Holy pretty crap. much any Australian actor you could name apart from Jeffrey Rush and Kate Blanchett because they came yeah. from theatre background. They've all done Home and Away or Neighbours. Wow, I've never heard of either of these shows. There you go. And I like literally want to go on YouTube yes. and just see what these guys were like back when you they were should. young like that. Margot Robbie was in Neighbours. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, I think it's they just all. a breeding ground of like superstars. It is, yeah. Holy cow. All right, Alicia, well, so on this show, what I do, I'm sure as you know, I like to ask people, what's the last movie you watched? Yeah. Whether it be on a plane, on your iPad, maybe it was on Netflix, you're at home. Uh, I said this to Mark Ellis in an episode that will be coming up very soon. Uh, I don't want to know what's the last movie you saw in the theater, only because you, you guys, it's your job. Yes, I just came back from Sundance, so I saw yeah. 20 films oh my God. in theaters, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. We'll talk about a movie I watched for fun, right? Yeah, something you put in just because you not generally want to enjoy. Not for profiles, not for anything, exactly. not for a review, not for a junket, but just for fun. Just something that you your heart desired yeah. to watch. So I've been on a lot of planes lately. Yes, you have. And a lot of long-haul flights, including going to Berlin. So I oh, packed wow. my Kindle full of movies movies the last movie i watched just for fun was the 1957 classic an affair to remember an affair to remember have you seen this movie i have not seen this movie carrie <laughs> grant deborah kerr so this is a first and i knew this was going to happen eventually <laughs> uh it gets to a point where i have not seen the movie uh, Alicia, you are well known for being a classic film buff. Yes. Um, that's when you joined the schmoes now show i was like this is going to bring a great aspect to our show because while all of us guys love Star Wars and Indiana <laughs> yeah. Jones, uh, a lot of us don't really have deep roots in the classic films. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm scanning my brain, and I, yeah. do, I barely think I've even heard of this movie, to well, be honest you with you. might remember it from Sleepless in Seattle, because that's <laughs> okay. the movie that she watches in Sleepless in Seattle, okay. with the famous Eiffel Tower scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building <laughs> okay. scene. And we're romanticizing it even more. Yeah. Which happens in Affair to Remember. Okay. So do you want me to tell you what it's about? Yeah, give me the rundown, because... I haven't seen this movie. Uh, I haven't seen Sleep is in Seattle probably since the 90s. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's a very girly film. That's <laughs> yeah. why I haven't seen it. It's a very romantic movie. Okay. It stars Cary Grant. He plays this this womanizer. He's a famous womanizer playboy. Sounds like Cary Grant. Sounds like Cary <laughs> Grant. And he is on a boat. He's traveling to New York where he's going to get married to this girl. Also on the boat is another woman played by Deborah Kerr, Terry, and she has a boyfriend already, a long-term boyfriend. She's traveling to New York to be with him. 
they meet and they are opposites because she doesn't stand for the womanizing stuff. Uh, and then he is very much a playboy and he's very famous. People are very excited that he's on the boat. But they meet, they end up falling in love after a little while. There's some great back okay. and forth where they don't like each other. And I love that in any romantic movie. They okay. hate each other. They've yeah. got great banter. Eventually they see other sides to each other and then they end up falling in love. So on this boat trip, they fall in love and they say, okay, well, obviously we've got some things to figure out. It's very highly publicized that he's going to marry this girl. She's had this long-term boyfriend for a long time. So they said, okay, we can't deny this love. This love is real. But let's give ourselves six months to figure things out. This is before Facebook, before okay, yeah. cell phones before or anything. Any of that, yep. So six months time, we will meet on the top of the Empire State Building oh, if we both want to okay. be together forever. Okay. So six months goes along <laughs> yep. and I don't know if you want me to get into spoilers or not. This is a pretty famous film. <laughs> yeah. Something happens that she can't make it there. Oh, really? She can't okay. make it and he gets upset because okay. she's not there. So he thinks that she doesn't care. Okay. There's a bigger reason why she couldn't be there okay. and a reason that she doesn't want to reveal to him. Does that get resolved in the movie? In the end. Okay. So finally, in the I... last few minutes, he realizes why she couldn't be there okay. and that she had always loved him. Okay. It's really romantic. Wow. Sweet. Well, I, mean, I see. I'm, I'm glad Tragedy, you gave us... love. Yeah, yeah, you kind of gave us some of the ending there without giving us the details, mm-hmm. which is good because it sounds interesting. Two movies pop in my head during that whole synopsis. Uh, one is a movie I was talking about, I think, last night. Um, it could happen one night. Yes. Carrie Elways is matched up with a girl who they hate each other. Yeah. And it's one of those things where there's, like, so much the chemistry. Banter. So great. Yeah. And even though you can see these two don't like each other, acting like it, you could tell they just both really fall in love with each other. Yeah. And it sounds a little bit like that. So would you say his character is somewhat similar to his character? Yeah, I think it's the character that he plays that quite he often. the best, yeah. But he's so charming and so wonderful mm-hmm. at that character. Mm-hmm. Watching him, you realize how timeless he, he is as, as an actor. You can always fall in love with him, whether mm-hmm. you're watching it now or watching it back in the 50s. And he's got the George Clooney thing, or George Clooney has the <laughs> has Cary the Grant, Grant thing. thing yeah. I think George Clooney spent Better a lot way. of times watching <laughs> Cary Grant in okay. movies. But it's that great matchup. And she's a really strong woman as well. Mm-hmm. She's a no-nonsense. She's not going to fall for his charms very easily. And when she does, then you really believe it. So it's it's just one of the most romantic movies of all time. The other thing that brought me some memory of that was you said um, he goes there and she doesn't show up. Mm-hmm. And he's not sure why. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of Casablanca. Yeah. Because there's the whole flashback scene, which is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. When he doesn't and, understand why yeah, she's the not there. Yeah, the train station. Yeah. Yeah. And he finds out later yeah. why. And it's kind of, so some similarities some there, Some similarities, you say? yeah. So this came out in 1957. Um, and But the, the reason why it works, even though it does have similarities to other movies, is because of the characters. Because you really believe their love and you're really mm-hmm. rooting for them. And, and you're watching this going... To her, like, just tell him. He'll understand why. Just yeah, tell yeah. him. He doesn't know, and that's why he's acting like this. Uh, and then when it all gets revealed in the last few minutes, then then it's really exciting. Because you me, know they're going to be together forever. <laughs> I'll read the synopsis real quick. It's, I'm, it's pretty much what you said. A couple falls in love and agrees to meet in six months Empire State Building, but what will happen? Mm. Uh, would you say this is more like, I know it's a romantic film, but is there more drama or is it closer to the comedy aspect? It's got a lot of comedy until the twist. Until the twist. Then the twist is more dramatic and then you really feel for the characters. But the, the whole beginning, the whole first half I would say is the banter between them mm-hmm. on the boat and they're trying to hide it too because people on the boat are starting to talk starting to mm-hmm. realize that they spent a lot of time together okay and that's a bit scandalous because everyone knows that he's going to get married and she doesn't want her boyfriend to find out and there's a great scene when they they arrive to New York on the boat and they're both like okay I'll see you in six months love you but see you in six months yeah, yeah. and then she watches him see the woman he's about to marry and he seems really excited and she's like oh what, what are you doing yeah. and then it happens again where he sees the boyfriend going hi and, and she's like oh my gosh I missed you and he's like oh hang on a second there's jealousy in okay. there it's how much of this movie takes place on the boat is it one of those movies where a like a, a large portion does a large okay. portion does and then they kind of speed through the last few the last six months uh-huh. and then you see the the twist and then you see what happens afterwards i'd say most of it is on the boat so most of it is on the boat which is a romantic idea yeah. isn't it that you're away from everything for so a long really, time that's where really you get to see the two interact exactly once they're off the boat they really know and there's a great much. moment when they're on the boat the boat has to stop and make port mm-hmm. 
and he goes to see his grandmother and he takes mm-hmm. her with him because she's like, yeah, sure, you're going to see your grandmother. It's probably just another girl that mm-hmm. you have. You have a girl in every port. And he's like, well, if you don't believe me, come with. And that's when she sees another side to him. Okay. She realizes that he's more than just gotcha. this playboy type. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Um, when it comes to these kind of romantic films, do you feel... <laughs> Movies are often parodied. You watch Hot Shots, they parody Casablanca. Yeah. They parody some of these, you know, Gone with the Wind movies. Is this one of those films you've seen parodied in other films? Like, cause Not really. I was going to say, this doesn't like... No, I mean, I've seen it being used in Sleepless in okay, Seattle. Yeah. So she watches the film, she loves mm-hmm. it, and that's when she comes up with the same idea to meet at the top of the Empire State Building, exactly like in Affair to Remember. Okay. But that's done with love. Yeah. They haven't really seen it being parodied. It's one of these films, I think, that's so uh special in the eyes of people who've seen it it just holds a special place in your heart okay that i don't think you can really make fun of it because it's so genuine and it and it's funny as well it's not it's not sappy yeah yeah it's not but sappy. it makes you cry gotcha i'm curious because when you said the name of this movie I'll, I'll admit to you i've heard of it before yeah but i knew nothing about the movie it's just it's as well as movies it's not quite the level of casablanca yeah or, you know, the Kill Mockingbird, or, you know, It Could Happen One Night. It's not quite that level of popularity. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in any top 100, no. maybe, top 100 like movies romantic of all time. Comedies? Romantic comedies, definitely. Maybe? I think okay. it would be in the top 20, okay. top 20. I would say, okay. if you're including classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're not including just the modern day stuff. Okay. But it's, it, doesn't, it hasn't reached the stature of something like Casablanca. But I think it's a movie that if you watched it, and I'll put the challenge that you should watch it, I, I think you would really enjoy it, and it okay. wouldn't be what you expected. Yeah, and I was telling you the other night, like, um, one of the first times I saw it could happen one night with Cary Grant, I'd never really seen a Cary Grant movie before, and this is like when I was in film school and I was still learning, and when your teacher tells you we're going to watch this, you know, older black and white movie, yeah. the younger me was like, all right, we'll give it a chance, you know, it's probably going to be, you know, boring or it might be outdated. But it was the first time where I was like, okay, I know why I've heard of Cary Grant before. Because this guy has so much charisma. Mm. Like, literally, he's hysterical. Charming. And he's funny, charming. Like, I'm watching this movie. I was like, no wonder this guy is a legend. Yeah, he teases people. It's unbelievable. He's just got that swagger yeah. about him. He's good looking, tall. You totally believe him as this playboy character. Yeah, pencil must- mustache. And There's then just when something he, about it. <laughs> and then when he... Uh, he gives up all that charm and you see mm-hmm. the the real warmth underneath. I think mm-hmm. that makes him even more appealing. Um, I feel like when it comes to you, you, you love obviously watching classic films. Mm-hmm. Uh, are a majority of the, your favorite classic films, would you say they're romantic comedies I'd or dramas? I'd say they're comedies, yeah. Those are more comedies. Yeah, okay. the ones that I go back to time yeah. and time again, like Singing in the Rain okay. and Gentlemen for Blondes with Marilyn Monroe. I went okay. through a huge Marilyn Monroe phase <laughs> when I was young. All right. So those kind of movies are the ones that I return to. Of course, I, I hold in high regard, you know, Hitchcock, Hitchcock movies yep. and, and all the rest. But And Citizen Kane, I think, is a mm-hmm. great movie. It's become kind of this snobby thing to say, but yeah, it is yeah. actually a really well-made film. But romantic movies, I think if, if I have uh, time like on a plane and mm-hmm. it's not for work and it's something that I just want to pass the time and make me feel good, then I will go for the comedies in the classic section. But still, I'll go for like 50s <laughs> rather than 90s <laughs> rather or anything. 90s? Yeah. Um, what would you say is your favorite Cary Grant performance? Oh, favorite Cary Grant. One? I think it would be in To Catch a Thief, which is a Hitchcock film. Oh, okay. Because he, yep. he plays a jewelry burg- burglar and he, again, has this charm about him that even though he's kind of a, a scoundrel, he's trying to get better. He's trying to change his life. Okay. You still feel for him. And the fact that it's Cary Grant in the French Riviera, Riviera and he's so suave. The suave and his, it just fits his, right in. Uh, yeah, his <laughs> outfits, his wardrobe, he's got a deep tan. Gotcha. He looks uh, right deep on. Tan. Is it in color? He's on a boat, yeah. Okay, that one's in color? Yeah, that See, one's I in color. Know. Okay. He is on a boat in this beautiful clear blue water. I mm-hmm. think that's just, I want to live inside that movie. Okay, uh, well, interesting. And let's talk about Deborah Kerr. I'm not really familiar with mm. her. She's what a great is actress. She, what is her? Is she known mainly from this film or is other no, films? No, she's done a lot. I uh, I need to. <laughs> I, mean, I got her IMDb. Check, yeah. I'll have throw a, a couple out there. The King and I. Yeah, she's okay. known as a very serious actress. Oh, from here to eternity. Yeah, that's the one. That's I was the thinking one where of. they're literally like on, on the beach, the beach and the waters and coming up. Yeah, which is semi unrealistic. She was known for a lot of serious roles. So yeah. the the fact that she was in this film and she showed a real comedic side to her personality I think was great and that she also has the strength to back it up 
And She's you, not just a not just a throwaway female character. And who directed this film? Leo McCary. Yes, you're correct. You're good. Yeah. You're but so don't ask good. me what else he's done. I just know that he did <laughs> okay. this one. Uh, he's done, I'm looking at some Duck Soup. Oh, Marks? Duck Soup. He did the Marks there Brothers you go. film. Nice. So that makes me think maybe this movie must have some really good comedy in it. Yeah, it's got like some real said. great one-liners in there and some funny moments, funny situations. And this movie was nominated for four Academy Awards. Mm. So it wasn't like, you know, it's a classic for a reason. Mm-hmm. They obviously recognize it at its time. Yeah. Sometimes some of these movies don't get recognized. So like, I would say if anyone out there loves romantic movies like Sleepless in Seattle, mm-hmm. like When Harry Met Sally, then you should go back to the classics and look at where they started and, uh, and watch An Affair to Remember, and I think you'll love it. <laughs> What do you feel like today's romantic films, or even like the last two decades, what's missing from those movies that you feel maybe these films had? Yeah. Is there something, do you feel like these movies just have something that those movies don't have or nowadays? It's just that timeless feel, that feeling, it's nostalgic, it feels, this is when love was, was so important, because I was thinking about this. If this movie happened today, mm-hmm. you could just text them and say, hey, I'm not going to make <laughs> yeah. it to the Empire State Building. That's true, um, yeah. Or you could find them on Facebook. Mm-hmm. But this movie and same with Casablanca, when they take off in the plane at the end at Casablanca, that's it. That's it. You, you don't know, know if you'll yeah. ever see that person ever again. That's a good same point. with this. There's so much at stakes. Mm-hmm. There's so much there when you say, I'll see you in six months. It's like you have to be there at that time, at that date, or else how are you going to track them down? Maybe through the phone book. But okay. still, you know, it just, I feel like that ups the romance. It makes it feel really important, like huh. a life or death situation, this Te- love. <laughs> Technology has one killed shot. Yeah, now it's romance. just like, yeah, you know, I'll Snapchat you later. <laughs> I'll Snapchat, yeah. I'll find you on Tinder. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> what do you consider to be the last great romantic film? <sighs> Well, I actually saw a really good one at Sundance, so oh, really? I feel like it's not a dead oh, genre okay. at all. Uh, it's just the way you do it now, the modern Fifty day Shades stuff. Of yeah, of course. <laughs> How did you know? Fifty <laughs> Shades of Grey. <laughs> it's a movie called Sleeping with Other People, and it's really? um, it's very much like When Harry Met Sally about the age old question of uh, so can men and women ever be friends? Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, Jason yes, Sudeikis. I've heard about this. Alison Brie. Yes, Alison Brie. They have great chemistry, and okay. that I think does the romantic comedy genre really mm-hmm. well. In that it's very charming, at the same time it feels very modern and fresh, and it's very funny. I don't like when it's just raunch for the sake yeah, of raunch. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah. I feel like that degrades the love aspect in, in some way. The last film I really enjoyed that was a comedy and it definitely was a romantic film, but maybe not a lot of people looked at it that way was *Silver Lining Playbook*. Oh, you felt that that was I felt super the romantic. relationship. Well, it wasn't like super romantic, but their relationship, I really, it's like these two messed up it people. screwed up, yeah. Yeah, and I just thought it was a really interesting way. And I really did feel, end of the movie, I felt genuine emotion for that couple. I love the dance scene in that yeah. movie. It's and really when Jennifer, sweet. Lawrence like runs off. Yeah. And, she, and Bradley literally runs her, you know, runs up to her and grabs her and he gives a speech. Yeah. I thought that was like a great, like, that is a romantic, romantic film moment. moment. I just wouldn't think of that as a romantic movie. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, some people wouldn't... I, I can understand if I said that, you wouldn't really think that. No, what would you think but there are romantic movies. Would you think of it more as a drama, drama comedy? Yeah, drama. I don't know, man. A dark comedy. I, I more guess. More dramatic. I, I don't know why, but I kind of just saw it as like a... Definitely after I saw it, I remember showing it to a cousin of mine. Yeah. I recommended it to him. And he called me, and you know, my cousin was like, this is, this is kind of a chick flick. Yeah. And I was like, really? I guess. I didn't really think about it that way either, but I kind of agreed after I rewatched it again. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I agree that it does have romantic points yeah. in it, but I just wouldn't call it a romantic no, film. No, I guess not. It's a messed <laughs> up romantic film, maybe to me, and that's probably why I like it. Yeah. Um, so if you would, would you like to see a romantic film made in this style, maybe a period piece film? Mm. Do you think they could That'd pull that off? to pull off, wouldn't I it? I feel like um, Jennifer Lawrence and uh, Bradley Cooper just had a movie that was shelved for a long time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Serena? Well, Serena, which really, when I saw the trailer for that, it reminded like me a of period. Yeah, something that would have come out now. Because time. that's the, the hard thing about making a romantic film work these days is I, I do feel it comes down to a lot of technology. That's what because I'm saying. you have you, to make it believable. Yeah, and if you make it you a period to, piece. Because even these days with the, the run to the airport scene, I mean, mm-hmm. that's changed. You can't get through security anymore without yep. <laughs> without a boarding that's pass. Very you true. have to buy a boarding pass and run through. Um, and it's just lost something. So. Yeah, a period piece, if you could pull that off and make it feel believable, yeah. where you really do feel for the characters and you don't feel like mm-hmm. they're just pretending because they're mm-hmm. in the pretendy world. 
then maybe. A great example of that would be just a couple years ago, The Artist won Best oh, Picture. Yeah, I agree. That which was is a great movie. romantic, and and that was you did feel the stakes. It felt like I was watching you a felt movie it was from tragedy. those days. Yeah, too. yes, I, uh, I agree with that. I took my mother to go see that. I was I was visiting home in Connecticut. Oh, it was such a great movie, and uh, she really enjoyed it. And I was definitely worried because listen, it is a silent film. Mm. To take that away from a film to me it was like it, some people said it was like gimmick a little bit, but I totally felt like Mm-mm. it's it hard to pull off. The movie perfectly yeah and uh, a lot of people you know a lot of my friends who aren't as much into film were just would not give that movie the time of day oh, and i so many great scenes in it i absolutely loved it and i was Dancing totally and... fine with it winning best picture yeah i was too yeah. i thought that was a really beautiful film mm-hmm. really uh well made and some great scenes in there too like uh when she has his jacket yeah and oh, the like jacket scene, yeah. oh so and great <laughs> i love the one of my favorite aspects of that movie i know we're just podcast basically just went to about the artist <laughs> is they show him making a movie yeah back in those days mm-hmm. and how like there's that scene where he goes in the theater and like no one's watching his movie mm-hmm. and he it was like his dream project and she that's kind of like, becomes a star yeah and then there's the jealousy yeah. and that's why it reminded me a bit of singing in the rain okay which is one yep. of my favorite classic films uh because it's about making movies mm-hmm. at the time when the talkies came in yeah and what that did for silent movie actors who Mm -hmm. were so used to overacting everything then suddenly they had to take it down a notch i feel like if i saw that movie and you took out like the cameos from the more famous actors like john goodman and stuff Mm -hmm. and you just showed to me in a class i might have thought it was an actual old school film yeah and uh i think that's really hard to pull off and i give that movie a lot of credit uh fair to remember is it black and white i'm curious no no it's in color color. technicolor i think i think it's been colored later on Okay. But yeah, it's all in color, and mm. again, rewatching it recently, it just made the time fly by on the plane. Nice, and I, th- I think a lot of people give too much. Uh, some people it bothers people when the movie's not color. Mm. Uh, some movies pulled off great, like we said, The Artist, uh, Good Night and Good Luck, mm-hmm. Schindler's List. Yeah, it can be a stylistic choice. Exactly, that really works. I totally. And agree. then if if you do watch a film from the forties, like Casablanca, in mm-hmm. black and white, that doesn't take anything away from it. Nothing at, at all. all. No, because it's got the story. And that's why I love classic movies is because it's all yeah. about the story. They don't have exactly. the big special effects to do anything tricky. They just have a story to rely on. And this is a simple love story. Do you do you disagree when sometimes they go back and they color the films? Uh, I think it can be done well. It could be done well? I think well. it can be done well so you don't notice it. But I see what you're saying. It wouldn't bother me. Like Casablanca, not Casablanca, I'm sorry, Citizen Kane. Oh, yeah. The cinematography in that movie is amazing. Yeah. And you know, I, I know that cinematographer was shooting for black and white. Just yeah, the, the shadows. White, the shadows and everything. Yeah, if, if you colored yeah, Citizen it, Kane, it would then be I horrible. Feel, it, it, I, guess it, I feel like it would just not work. <laughs> like, at all, in The Third Man. Yeah, Another yeah. film, like, if those were colored, it would just, I feel like it would ruin a movie for me. That's true, because it was shot specifically, yeah, specifically for, for black. But something black. like Gentlemen for Blondes with Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell, again, that's a comedy. Again, yes, comedy, and the which is technicolor. never... They, I mean, they don't shoot any great yeah. cinematography in there. It's just comedies usually, different. comedies aren't usually yeah. cinematography is pretty plain. And then it looks pretty when you see their outfits all in color. Yeah, and the girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, this is great. I think everyone out there should definitely give an affair to affair to remember. An affair to remember. Yeah, <laughs> I almost I would forgot the title. Love but. people to watch it and let me know what they think. Yeah, guys, tweet us. At, I will. You know, I will check it out. I Good, will watch yeah. it and I will tweet my Schmo score out. Okay, great. And then uh, everybody, so I'm at Schmo's JTE. I will follow me. I will tell you what I thought of this movie. Alicia, where can they find you on Twitter? They can find me at, at Alicia Malone and let me know if you've seen An Affair to Remember or if you watch it, what your thoughts are. <laughs> I hope you love it too. You're one of those lucky people who got their name. Yeah, on the yeah, I was. That's lucky. like hitting the jackpot these days. Because I've been on since almost day one. Since day one, yeah. yeah. See, that didn't happen for me. I was an early adopter. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Do me a favor if you're listening to this on iTunes. uh, Give me a five-star rating if you think I gave you a five-star podcast. Yeah. (laughs) I I think we did, right? I think you did. I think so. You're great. And, uh, yeah, write a little review. I don't care if you write one sentence. It could just be a you know exclamation mark. I don't care. Anything counts. Yeah, Help it helps. Out. Uh, you can catch Alicia on Schmoes. No, as yes. usual, Profiles, which Profiles. is one of my all-time favorite shows. <laughs> if you're not f- watching the show, guys, you're missing out. Francis Ford Coppola was on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, Matthew Broderick. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, it's we've Geek got great Heaven. guests coming up too soon, so I, stay tuned. I do 
don't even know, and I can't wait to find out. As yes. soon as this recording is done, yeah, I'm going to find out you. who she's talking about. Uh, all right, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in to JT Movie Thanks, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye.